Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about RoboCop Rogue City. Uh, this is from the developer Teon, the folks behind the most recent Terminator game, Terminator Resistance. Uh, it was a flawed but well-received game that kind of understood the Terminator franchise. So here, they've been given the keys to RoboCop, and this this is significant because Robocop doesn't get a lot of video games and the ones he has gotten have been pretty hit or miss. This is also significant because I am Robocop's number one fan. So there, there's your context. I was really nervous going into this because frankly, it's surprisingly easy to screw up Robocop. You know, big, dumb, chunky 80s robot, right? Well, there's a lot more to it and a lot of people miss the point. But thankfully, this game understands that. As a diehard RoboCop fan, this is pretty close to the escapism I wanted. If you're not into RoboCop, I don't know how much enjoyment you'll get out of this. You'll probably see the flaws more easily. It's a fairly simple, lower budget game with a slightly lower price point reflecting that on Steam. But still, even with some minor complaints, this satisfied me. Like my critical gamer brain has things to point out, but my RoboCop side of my brain is having a really fun time, and that's always the most important thing. Uh, and of course, uh, the housekeeping, uh, we didn't get a review copy. I went out and just bought this, and this footage was captured on PC and is spoiler free. Now, Rogue City takes place between RoboCop 2 and 3, if you care. So basically, it's right before the franchise completely falls apart. Uh, now, in this game, old Detroit is still a mess, and RoboCop is just out on the job doing his policing thing when a new crime wave hits the city centered around a mysterious figure and some nasty baddies. I won't spoil anything. So it's up to you and your partner and Lewis to get to the bottom of things. Now you navigate hub areas and go into interior sections that usually bring large scale shootouts. There are a lot of criminals and gang members you shoot up in this game and the first person shooting is awesome actually. It's incredibly simple. Robocop can get a few upgrades throughout the game but you're mostly just blasting away with your Auto 9, you're picking up enemies and chucking them around and you're shooting explosive barrels. You can also pick up objects like uh, TVs and chairs, a bench, whatever, to throw at enemies. There's some bullet time slow-mo and some breach sequences and all of it is incredibly violent and destructive and excessive. Enemies are like basically begging to be shot up a bunch of times thanks to uh, some really good gore and blood effects and a lot of uh, exploding heads. The Auto 9 has really great feedback with the shooting. Even if the sound of the gun isn't 100% perfect for a stickler like me, it's pretty close and it gets the job done. Uh, explosive barrels are everywhere and enemies constantly use like turrets and they're throwing grenades. So there's tons of chaos on screen. And the best part is that walls fall apart, furniture goes flying, debris everywhere, things crumble. The destruction is surprisingly good and really adds to the fun of shooting. Because again, it's simple. Robocop isn't super fast. He doesn't run super fast. He doesn't aim super fast. He's a lumbering tank and the game does a good job of kind of riding a line to make it feel like you're stomping around as Robocop with the speed and the sound effects, but not totally a thousand percent slow because you know, it, it still needs to play well. It still needs to feel okay as a video game. And I think they found a good middle ground. Robocop takes a lot of damage and uh, you collect these OCP charge healing items and eventually use environmental heals because of course, this is a video game, but often you can just slowly charge through environments, taking hits, maybe occasionally strafing behind cover and just exploding some heads. Even if the shooting is simple, it's the gore, the feedback, the visual effects, the destruction, and just like the excessiveness of all of it that really sells it. It's more like just a fun arcadey shooter. You don't have to ADS and have a bunch of precision. You're hip firing, stuff's blowing up. It's fun. And Robocop can pick up other guns, which is fine, I guess. <laughs> it's really funny to see Robocop use an AK, but uh, the shotgun is something else. It's really, 
really damn good. Really, again, all I can emphasize is that the combat is simple and effective. You're not Apex Legends sliding or like sprinting and meleeing and no scoping. You're just walking and shooting, exploding heads, having a good time. Some people might want more, but for some Robocop escapism, I was all about it. My only real complaint is that it loses some of that punch further in the game, like as it gets more challenging, like th there's more to deal with and you feel a little bit less like Robocop because you can start to get your ass kicked. I get it's a video game. They had to make some challenge. It's kind of like the same problem with Superman. It's like, he's invincible. How do you make that compelling from a gameplay perspective? But hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, the other main crux of the game is doing police work and talking to people. Now, you may think, Robocop, having a little chat, dialogue trees? Well, it actually works pretty well. There's some hit or miss voice acting, specifically from some uh, hammy NPCs and Ann Lewis's voice actor, but even Peter Weller himself has a couple of lines that I think could have used, you know, one more take. But the bottom line is, is that there's some clever writing here. And a lot of it is presented in the wonderful recreation of the police station from the original movie or out in these hub areas. Uh, you can literally like walk the streets of an 80s movie style crime ridden Detroit. Uh, on your way to main quests, you can issue parking tickets, help citizens, or divert and go do some side quests. Some of the side quests are a bit slow and uh, kind of boring to be totally honest, but I stuck with them because every so often you'll get a really good line or a reference or a funny moment. Now the game is kind of like a light RPG in the sense that it has you engaging in conversations, deciding your responses, and the game taking note of those choices. A big example is like you can choose to embrace the humanity in you and let a kid doing graffiti get off with a warning or immediately give him a ticket on the spot like the uncompromising robot cop you were designed to be by OCP. Uh, walking around these pretty detailed and gorgeous hub worlds, finding items, talking to citizens, it kind of just feels like a really light version of the modern Deus Ex game hubs. And I don't totally think that's a bad thing, but again, it's just nowhere near as complex. It does play it pretty safe though here, like you're not really doing too much, and a lot of it feels a bit standard, and I think that's amplified by uh, one thing the game is lacking in some spots, especially when it comes to the side quests, is any excitement in the presentation. Characters look kind of janky and ugly, the lip syncing is usually off, and the game doesn't feature like a ton of music. It actually has a lot of quiet moments to where I wanted a little bit more bombasticness, if that makes sense. But where it lacks in that, it does really do a good job of like feeling like w what Robocop should be doing. He is serving the public trust. You are walking around, getting to know the community and helping it, committing justice, you know, and doing that type of stuff. It it's interesting for me. Uh, also, game-wise, there is a skill tree. It's got a surprisingly large amount of like little nodes to unlock. Conversation stuff like psychology points that unlock more responses when, say, you're interrogating a suspect, uh, to just having more health, unlocking bullets that will ricochet off your armor and hurt enemies, a little bit of a dash, stuff like that. It's not groundbreaking, but it's just compelling enough. You add to the skill tree with points that you earn through finding OCP training discs or by leveling up. You gain XP by progressing, doing stuff, and collecting evidence in the environment. And that evidence is everywhere. It's just stuff to click on and pick up, like drugs, incriminating photos, stolen wallets or purses. It's actually, it's actually kind of funny how many there are everywhere. There's also a, a kind of unlock system for your Auto 9 as well, which is a little confusing at first, but you can upgrade your spread, fire mode, armor piercing, make it full auto, stuff like that. Upgrades themselves, well, not groundbreaking, but again, it's the Auto 9. It's awesome as is. You can only do so much, but I'm glad they found little ways to change it up. You know, even if it's simple. Graphically, I did have some little visual bugs and flickering here and there, and a moment where character dialogue just didn't happen. Another time, I had character dialogue, but characters weren't opening their mouths. This, coupled with the fact that some characters in their animations, like I had said earlier, don't really look great up close, makes it all look and feel less than perfect. It is, again, like I said, and I know it's like an overused reviewer word, uh, but uh, janky. 
But you know what? In a weird way, this is exactly the production level RoboCop deserves. <laughs> Thankfully, though, it did run really well on my PC and I had no actual game breaking problems at all. No hard crashes, no quest glitches or anything like that. But again, the thing I wanna emphasize here is that the game gets it. Tons of little details here and there went a really long way impressing me. I'll probably keep like the robo fanboy stuff to a separate video on my other channel later on youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. I linked that below. But uh, just the writing and some moments here really show that the game gets that RoboCop is not just about a cool sci-fi robot cop. It's a satirical world with a lot of comedy, over the top stuff, lampooning American excess, consumerism, corporations, and the game reflects that through dialogue, but also TV and radio broadcasts scattered throughout the world, some clever bits and some cutscenes, as well as lore accurate graffiti and signage and advertisements everywhere. It really can be a treat for fans. It smartly cherry picks elements from stuff beyond the first movie here and there to build out a cohesive RoboCop world concept that makes sense. This, I will say straight up, is the RoboCop 3 that we should have gotten in a lot of ways. Nothing in my mind will ever compare, ever stack up to that original Paul Verhoeven RoboCop film, but this is by far, full stop, the best video game representation of the Robot Man. It doesn't outstay its welcome, like 15 hours, give or take, depending on how you play and depending on what you're doing, and yeah, it might not blow everybody's doors down, but it is a good video game fun time. It understands the fun factor, the chaos of it all. In some levels, you got guys with explosives, you got guys on motorcycles, and you have crazy weapons, and shit is just blowing up everywhere, and it's just good, clean, good old-fashioned video game fun. And sometimes, we need that. But of course, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. I wanna know what you think about RoboCop Rogue City. Of course, if you jumped in during like the early access pre-order period thing, or if you're waiting to get it. I'd love to hear from people who played the game but never actually watched RoboCop. I wasn't sure if a lot of you guys would like it, but I've heard from some people on social media that they are. Uh, do you fall in that camp? And what is your experience with other RoboCop games? Have you been playing RoboCop games like me since the NES days? Oof, let's talk anything RoboCop down in the comments. But if you like this video, hearing our opinions, seeing some gameplay on the screen, if this helps you out, steers your decision, clicking the like button helps us. We would appreciate that, really. But if you're new, we put out videos every single day. You can always find me on social media at Jake Baldino. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.